morning, everybody, on this wonderful day. I have to tell you, my garden is looking absolutely magnificent and entrancing. We welcome today visitors from Seattle, Candace and Tom, thank you for coming to join us. Before we start on the theme of this service, I want to remind you all that this is Mother's Day in our calendar. And we should give thanks for our mothers. We all have or had mothers. We thank for their sacrifice and love, for their peaceful nature and for their support. Let us remember what they taught us and live so that they would be proud of us. Let us remember and pray that our world might be influenced more by mothers so that it becomes more loving and selfless. Might mothers and women in general take a greater part in our world. Let us pray particularly for those Ukrainian mothers fleeing from the homes and leaving their husbands and sons behind in danger and fighting. May they have strength to overcome the difficulties and fear and fear they are facing. Let us pray that they will soon be reunited in their homes in Ukraine and be strengthened by their beliefs in themselves, their families and friends and belief in their God. As you leave at the end of this service, there is a symbolic flower for you to take with you. So this service, the theme is courage and belief. What we believe determines who we are. Courage derives from what we believe. What we believe about ourselves, what we believe about other people, and what we believe about God. I'm now going to light our chalice. And can we say together, please, the words on the order of service? We light this candle as a symbol of our faith. If any of you would like, like to light your own candle of concern, please come forward. So this morning, I'm lighting a candle in memory of my mum. Um, this is the first Mother in Sunday we've had in chapel since she passed. So this is in memory of her. But I'd also like to light a candle 
for my cousin and remember him because last year on Mother's Day, my cousin Brian died from COVID. So that's very close to my heart today. And on the theme, this one is for Amy, who has COVID at the moment. She says she's not too poorly, better than she was first time she had it. But um, nevertheless, she has COVID now. And being really greedy, a candle of joy, because this week, Lucy was 15. So that's lovely news. We were able to get together for a birthday um, and we missed the two previous ones. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That was a surprise. I'm lighting my candle for all the mothers who cannot see their children today, um, which is very sad, particularly the ones that are in the uh, Ukraine, but also for all the mothers who may be in hospital or ill at this time and remembering my mother who died very, very long time ago. And my mother-in-law who was a member of uh, this chapel. For all our thoughts, said and unsaid. We'll now sing the spirit of life. The words are on the shore. Spirit. We're now going to sing our first hymn. And usually, for me, when I choose a theme, I find it difficult to find the hymns. There was a superfluity of hymns about courage and belief. So it was easy for me to choose. So we're going to start with a Quaker hymn. I think Quakers are a good example of people whose beliefs affect how they act. So hymn 133, how can I keep from singing?
I wasn't, I wasn't clear whether I should really tell you this story. You might find it a bit odd. But it was a deep influence in me and helped me in a funny way in my beliefs. It's really a children's story. It was part of my life when I think I was about eight. My parents were Europeans, so they longed to travel after the war. The first trip, I remember, the wonder of a meal on the train. We hadn't anything like that during the war here. And I remember particularly the tomato soup. We were going for a holiday in St. Moritz in Switzerland, quite upmarket, like small children do. This is the risky part. I used too much paper on the loo and blocked it. My father asked me if I had caused it. And not having the courage to tell the truth, I said no. He called the maid and asked, and she said, has anyone put anything down the loo? And my father said, no, nor has my son. He said he didn't. But she unblocked it and she proved conclusively that I must have put about half a toilet roll down the loo. My father, who had backed me and told her it could not have been me, was very embarrassed and cross. I had to write out a hundred lines, I must not lie. I tell you, I can still see that piece of paper with the short word sentence, I must not lie. If I am tempted to not tell the truth, the complete truth sometimes, that paper appears in front of me. The episode tells me that I should have had the courage to tell the truth. Of course, I believe that I would be punished and so I lied. So do politicians lie. They are not big enough to bear the consequence but it doesn't do them any good. Telling the truth sometimes involves believing in oneself and in the belief of the understanding and forgiving nature of those we are tempted to lie to. Little people avoid the truth. Actually, we are human and nobody expects us to be perfect. We need to believe in each other so that we tell the truth. I am a great optimist and I therefore exaggerate just a wee bit sometimes. It is a sort of lie, but pessimism is too. I want to be successful and I anticipate it. My colleagues know I am an optimist, and I think Shannon does too, and you understand it. It is about believing in each other and in ourselves, have courage and tell the truth always. Now, I don't believe I can sing in tune solo. 
I dare not try. I do not have the courage. And I'm not going to try now in front of all of you. Perhaps I should, but I won't. Thank you. Now let us pray. Let us pray for courage as a result of a strong belief in ourselves. A strong belief in our righteousness. A strong belief in our honesty. And a strong belief in living a good life. Let us pray for courage as a result of our belief in the goodness of others. A strong belief in the forgiving nature of others. And a strong belief in the generosity of others. Let us pray for courage. As a result of our belief in our God, the great spirit that for me is within us all and around us, and the strong belief in the watchful spirit of all those who have gone before and who are present now. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our second hymn is 143. 143 did the uh, starts with the German words, which I will make sure we understand the translation, although it is explained in the hymn. Die Gedanken sind frei. It's a, to a traditional German tune. Die Gedanken sind frei, and it means our thoughts are free. Him 143. The Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts freely flower. Gedanken sind frei.
The reading is from the Gospel of, of John, chapter 15. It's read from the New Living Translations. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. I sometimes think that's a bit severe, but we'll carry on. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my father. And I think I would add, it will give you courage. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And we think of that perhaps as we think about what is happening in Ukraine at this moment, how the population is defending itself. So now we will have a prayer. I'm going to read one of my favorite prayers. It's about risk, but, a, but taking risks is about courage. And then there will be a period of quiet for our own meditation. And then a music, a time to meditate to Barry playing the organ for us. To laugh is to appear being the fool. To weep is to risk appearing to be sentimental. To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose feeling is to risk exploring your true self. To place your ideas, your dreams before the crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risk must be taken 
because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, simply cannot learn, feel, change, grow, love, or live. Chaired by their certitudes, they are slaves and has forth a forfeited freedom. Only a person who risks is free. Perhaps I should have sung to you.
Thank you, Barry, again. Lovely. Our next hymn is number 150, the Pilgrim's Hymn. Who would true valor see? Surely, all about courage. Hymn 150. Thank you, Robert. I have the courage to sing next to you, but not on my own. I'm just going to turn the light on. Wait, come on, Robert. Thank you. I have the light, actually, more that you can see me <laughs> than I can see what's written here. Right? And before I start, I just want to say there are two um, things that we've got created. We've created a, um, a piece of paper that we intend to deliver to loads and loads of houses about um, what you can, how you can support Ukraine, some of the organizations around here. And we're going to deliver that around to a lot of houses. I think there'll be some at the back. There's also the February calendar at the back too. Courage and belief. We are I'm sure impressed with the valor and courage of the Ukrainians defending their country and of the courage of the families abandoning their homes as refugees. And I know that a former member of this chapel, Vera, whose daughter and grandson are still in Odessa, are struggling with what to do. And it's good to look deeper into what we call courage in the context of fighting too, where you risk your own well being, even life for a higher cause, such as defending your country. 
Courage is overcoming fear of your well-being or even life. As in the prayer, it is taking risk with one's life or reputation or well-being. And it is the love, not me, but of you. Belief is vital to achieve our objectives. This is displayed in what we see in Ukraine today. The morale of the Ukrainian people in their cause is a key element in how well they will do in their war. The opposite may apply to the Russians. Military strategists do realize the importance of belief in one's cause to winning. We do take risks for a number of reasons. Some are selfless, some are selfish. It is to do with belief but many sorts of belief. Belief in oneself, belief in the reaction of other people, and belief in our God. For me, the great spirit of all past people and present, that great spirit of which we are all part. So first, let us consider belief in oneself. For us all to tell the truth about ourselves is tough and risky. I have to tell you that when I decided to do so, some nearly 60 years ago, that was the turning point in my relationship with Ruth. Politicians do not have the courage to tell the truth. So they lie because they are frightened of the consequences of telling the truth. If the voters knew the truth about them or their policies, might they not vote for them? In fact, we cannot hide the truth forever. And actually people understand that no one is perfect. But for some, our good points outweigh our bad ones. Lying accumulates and leads to more and more lies and we get deeper into the morass. The more we lie, the more we have to lie the greater it is to fall. Sure, we can apologize for lies and reform, but it ends up that we are damaged. It needs courage and belief in oneself to tell the truth. Often the truth though is not fixed. We're most of us either pessimists or optimists I don't know what you would count yourselves to be. It's difficult to be neither, to be realists. As a result, we act differently to different circumstances. It depends on our belief about the progress in this world. So if we take climate change, how we react depends on what we believe will happen. Will we have the courage to take the steps needed? Some of us think we are in for very difficult times, some not so bad, but it depends on what we believe. This is reflected in who we are. If I'm asked how long I expect to live, I think I will answer on the top side in my estimate. Others may be pessimistic. 
we change too dependent on our more recent experience. If we have a run of bad luck or health, we will veer towards our most recent experience. We are not statisticians and we don't understand probability theory. I am reminded by the sage who said, and I use this often, things are never as bad as they appear, but they're never as good either. Belief in ourselves is an important element in the courage we display in our lives. If we had led an honest life and believe in ourselves, it is easier to face mistakes. We can take the risk of admitting failings. We can summon the courage to do so. The less we have confidence in ourselves, the more difficult it is. It is in these circumstances that apologies really do ring true. I suppose in a way it needs more courage to admit a wicked life, but the action itself is an act of self-belief. Belief in the attitudes of other people also gives us courage to open ourselves to the risk of other people rejecting us. I think in the children's story, I expected my father to lambast me if I told the truth. There are other things I have admitted to friends and work colleagues in a way that needs courage. My discussions with Ruth before we were married, I would admit to things that I was not proud of, but I was confident in her attitude, her love and forgiveness. As I get older, I get slower. The part I can play is less. I am less mentally agile. It takes courage to admit all this. However, my belief in the people I work with is important. I believe they are forgiving, fair, respectful, and understanding. And they too are less than perfect. So belief in others, is a key element in giving me the courage to be honest with myself and others and have the courage to admit these failings. Ultimately, it is belief in the great spirit that gives us courage that great spirit of the spirit of all living things that has gone before and that exists now. It is the, that belief of which we are part. It is that spirit that gives us the strength and courage to live rightly for ourselves and others. It is that spirit which is the basis of our courage to be honest with ourselves and our companions on this earth. For each of us to understand that few are perfect and that so long as we have the courage to be honest and open, we will all improve and try to live our part in the great spirit world. So courage comes from belief in ourselves, from belief in others, from belief in the permanence of our natural world and belief in God, the great spirit, past and present and of the good of all our fellow life, all this is what gives us the courage to live and be a key part 
of God's world. Thank you. And I have the offertory. Now I'm going to sing our final hymn, which is 193 in the Green Book, Wisdom and Courage. Grant us courage, the benediction. As we go from this place, let us have courage derived from living an honest and good life. Have courage from being able to trust and love our neighbors. And have courage from our belief in our God.
As I extinguish the chalice, can we say the words on the order of service together? Though we extinguish the light of this candle, our faith burns on. to win it again. Oh, now in peace. Oh, now in peace.